Hey guys, welcome to StuffLux. Okay. In this video, I'm going to show you how to install WordPress on Google Cloud Platform. So go to your Google dashboard. On the top left, you'll see the hamburger menu and look for Marketplace. And on the search bar, type WordPress. You'll see all the WordPress configurations over here. What we're going to install today is the Bitnami version. So type Bitnami. If you want to learn more about Bitnami, go to bitnami.com for more info. You'll notice that there's a lot of WordPress Bitnami configuration here. What we're after is the WordPress Certify by Bitnami and Automatic. If you look at the additional details, what we're after is the BN Cert tool, which we'll use to create our SSL. You'll also notice that it comes with the very latest WordPress, which is 6.02, as well as Debian 11. If you want to know how much this will cost approximately, click pricing and you'll see that it costs about $18 Canadian, which is about $12 US. You can make this cheaper or even free once we configure the VM instance. So let's do that. Scroll up and click launch. If this is your first time installing something from the marketplace, you'll need to enable these required APIs. I'm going to skip this part. So that way you don't watch that spinning wheel for two minutes. Next thing we need to do is configure our VM instance. So for deployment name, name it to whatever you want. I'm going to name it Mac guides, which is our website that we're going to create for zone. You want to pick the zone that's closest to you or to your audience at least. So I'm going to pick us East. Since I want to take advantage of Google's free tier offer, I believe the series for this is E2, but to double check that, let's Google free tier Google Cloud. And then scroll on the bottom to look for Compute Engine. And we can see that it requires E2 micro VM on these zones and 30 gig of persistent disk. So let's do that. Let's go to our deployment. Select for series. You want to pick E2. For machine type, you want to look for E2 micro. And you'll notice on the right side that the price have gone lower. Even though there's a cost here, if this is your only website on this Google Cloud account, this WordPress website that we are building should cost us nothing. But Google can change their agreement at any time, so check the free tier agreement often. If you want a faster configuration, you can choose Compute Optimize or Memory Optimize. You'll notice that it has faster chip and memory, and it's a lot more expensive. Let's continue our configuration. So for boot disk, I'm going to leave it at 10 gigs. My website should only be less than 4 gigs. On the right side, you'll see all the software that will be installed. Make sure allow HTTP and allow HTTPS are checked, which is checked by default. You can put IP addresses here if you only want those specific IP address to access this website. For example, if you only want your office to access this website, then put your office IP address here. We're not going to do that, so let's click deploy. This will take about five minutes. So I'm going to fast forward this. If you're configuring one, get up and stretch and maybe do some aerobics. If you got this far on your WordPress deployment, please let me know by clicking the thumbs up button. And it's finished, but it looks like we have a warning here. Click view details. And it's a runtime configurator warning, which is mainly used for server notifications, which doesn't affect our WordPress installation. So we'll continue on. So this is our website address. You can click that and test it. Looks like it's working. Here's our admin panel web address. You can also see our WordPress user, which is user and our temporary password. And according to the suggested next steps, we need to change the temporary password as well as assign an external IP address. So let's change the password. I'm going to copy this. Then log into our WordPress admin by clicking here. We'll type user and paste the password here. Then click login. Looks like we have something to update first. So let's click updates. Select all the plugins that need to be updated and click update plugins. This will take a few seconds. Once it's done, 
We might as well double check if WordPress is up to date. So click home. And it's on version 6.02. Click updates. And it looks like it's on a very current version. So now go to users and let's edit our user. Scroll on the bottom. We're going to edit our nickname. We'll change this to Stopbox. Then select our display name to Stopbox as well. Let's add an email since it's required. This is usually used for password resets and comment notification. And then scroll on the bottom and click set new password. Copy the password and put it on your password manager. And then click update profile. You'll get a notification to make sure to check your inbox for email confirmation. So we're done with that. Let's go back to our deployment manager. The next step is assigning an external IP address. Now before we do that, I want to log into SSH first to ensure that the certification tool is actually installed. So click SSH. Enter the following command. cd forward slash is changed to root directory. Then we want to change our directory to this address, slash opt, slash bitnami, and then enter the list command. This is what we're looking for. It looks like it's installed. So we can actually close this and set up a static IP address. So type exit to close this window. We need a static IP address. So when the virtual machine restarts, our IP address remains the same. Click the hamburger menu, go to your compute engine, and select VM instances. Select your VM instance. Scroll down and look for network interfaces. Click that. And then on the left side, click IP addresses. This will show you all your IP addresses, including internal and external. Next, click Reserve External IP Address. To reserve a static IP address, name it and put a description, which is optional. For Network Service Tier, pick Premium for better performance. For IP version, select IPv4. IPv6 is not fully compatible with everything yet. For region, pick the region where your VM instance is. So ours is on US East and click Attach to and pick your VM instance. That's all configured, so click Reserve. While you're watching that wheel spin, help me out and click the subscribe button. This may take about a minute. We now have our static IP. Now let's go back to Deployment Manager. On the top, you'll see Search and type Deployment Manager. So over here, click your deployment. And as you can see, our IP address here has changed. If we go back to our old website and refresh it using the old IP, that won't work. So we need the actual IP address. I'm going to close this and let's click our IP address. Now the next thing we need to do is make this IP address show up as macguides.ca. Log into where you buy your domain. Mine is Google Domains. You want to edit the DNS configuration. Click DNS. Let's add a custom resource records. Sometimes it's called custom records. For a host name, you can leave it blank. Some domain provider asks you to put an at sign. Google Domains is blank. For type, select a record. And for TTL, leave that at 3600. And for data, Enter your static IP address here without the HTTP. You want to add a second record, this time for www. Select a record and paste the IP address here. Then click Save. Depending on who your domain provider is, these settings could take up to 24 hours to take effect. But since we have Google Domains and Google Cloud, these will only take about half hour. The easiest way to check if these settings worked is by opening a new tab and type your domain on the browser. 
Once your domain loads, then we are ready to add the SSL. That means making this not secure to secure. Go to your deployment manager and click SSH. This is where we're going to run the bnsert tool that we were checking earlier. Once SSH is loaded, type this sudo command. We use sudo to enable us to run the SSL certification program that is stored in the opt slash bitnami folder. Press enter. Enter your domain here, in my case, macguys.ca, and then put a space and enter another one with www. Hit enter. You want to enable HTTP to HTTPS. That's exactly what we're trying to do. So put Y for yes. For this one, I'm going to say no. And let's say yes for www redirection. So here are the steps that's going to happen. It's going to stop it. It's going to create the SSL, reconfigure for automatic renewal, and a bunch of other stuff. Once you're good with that, press Y for agree, and then hit enter. And then I'll ask for an email address, enter a valid one because you'll get an email when the SSL renewal stops working or have other issues. Then it will give you the Let's Encrypt agreement. Go to this link, and then once you're ready, enter Y for yes. Now let's wait for about a minute again, which I'll fast forward. That was done and no errors. So hit enter. And then type exit to get out from SSH. Now let's test this. I'm going to open another tab and then enter my domain. We can also test the www to make sure it forwards to non-www. Now let's test the admin panel. Let's log in there. And that also works. If you want to learn how to install a static website with Google Cloud, here's my video on that. Thank you very much for watching this video. Leave a comment below if you have any questions or just say thanks.